Based upon Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 127, the Quran asserts that the Hebrews, Abraham and Ishmael, raised the foundations of the Kaaba. If this is true, what are the implications and ramifications of such a statement in modern times? The Arabs cannot show a single oral or written tradition that they are in any way, shape or form related to or descended from the Hebrews, Abraham or Ishmael. It is unfortunate but absolutely necessary to repeat again and again and again that the claims of the Arabs are never based on facts but are entirely on wishful thinking compounded with the contortion of religion, the dislocation of history and the piracy, plunder and perversion of the beliefs of other peoples. How could their claims be true or possible since anyone who has ever read the Bible would know that the names of Arabia, Allah, Mecca or the Kaaba are not mentioned. The first and only time that the pagan Arabs became aware of the biblical stories was when Muhammad started his evangelizing process. When investigating the names of the Arabs mentioned in the hadiths regarding Muhammad's companions, their relatives and associates prior to the Quran, one will not find a single person called Abraham or Ishmael among the hundreds of names listed in them while the most prevalent name among the male Muhammadans is Muhammad. It was Muhammad who created these myths so that he could associate himself with the seed of Abraham and hence give himself a worthy ancestry upon which he could claim prophethood similar to those of the Hebrews and the Jews. Before Muhammad, there was never any mention in the oral tradition of the pagan Arabs regarding any association between Abraham, Ishmael, the Kaaba, or Mecca. It beggars belief, logic, and the historical records to accept that the Arabs, if they were truly descended from the line of Abraham and Ishmael, would have had a case of total national amnesia regarding their progenitors as well as having forgotten everything about the monotheism that was given to them. Such a case of folk amnesia has never been recorded anywhere in human history. It is an impossible scenario, especially since the true descendants from the seed of Abraham and Isaac, the Israelites and the Jews, kept their monotheism and the remembrance of their forefathers against all odds for the same period of 2,500 years prior to Muhammad's plagiarizing, pirating, plundering and or perverting their monotheism, their traditions, their fetishes and their scripture. We have been demonstrating incessantly throughout our series that every verse, concept, thought or idea mentioned in the Quran are the product of Muhammad's own imagination and his almost total misunderstanding of the biblical stories concepts and precepts. The Bible informs us that Abraham is buried in the cave of Machpelah in Hebron. By claiming an unsubstantiated descent from Abraham, the Arabs take the claim to Hebron as one of their holy places and for which they enacted laws forbidding the actual descendants, the Jews, from visiting the graves of their forefathers for 714 years. It is upon such mendacious allegations that the Arabs claimed and are claiming the holy sites of the Jews, including Jerusalem, as holy places for themselves alone. For the Arabs to forbid the Jews from visiting the grave of Abraham is not only a religious outrage, but a truly monumental moral obscenity. They, the Arabs, who have absolutely nothing whatsoever to do with the Hebrew prophets of the Jews, add insult to injury by also claiming all of these prophets as their own. The same Arabs who had plundered, subjugated and occupied other people's lands proceeded to pirate and subsume their holy places, their traditions and their beliefs also. The Muhammadan Arabs have never shown any respect whatsoever towards the religious and civil rights and or sensibilities of either the Jews, Christians or others whose lands they forcibly occupied. Witness the destruction or conversion of churches, synagogues and other temples in territories occupied by them when they conquered and subjugated its peoples. Throughout their history and unto the present, all they have been showing is their utter contempt and willingness for gratuitous pleasure in humiliating the people of the book as well as others such as Hindus, Buddhists, etc. The Arabs assert their right to the burial place of Abraham based upon their own totally unsubstantiated and spurious claims. 
I shall now reveal to you a scenario that has escaped the attention of hundreds of millions of people in the last 1400 years. Now, let us for an argument's sake assume that the Arabs are actually descended from Ishmael's seed and that Abraham is their forefather, just as he is for the Jews. We shall allow for the moment their claim to stand so that we can address the more important issue of the Kaaba. Al-Baqarah 2.127 and remember, Abraham and Ismail raised the foundations of the house with this prayer. Our Lord, accept this service from us, for thou art all hearing, all knowing. Our Lord, make of us Muslims bowing to thy will, and our progeny a people Muslims bowing to thy will. Rabbina, waj'alna muslimina laka, wa min dhurriyatina ummatan muslimata. These verses in clear Quranic Arabic affirm that the Hebrews Abraham and Ishmael raised the foundations of the Kaaba in Arabia, 1,000 desert miles away from Hebron in Canaan, as well as that they are Muslims, that is, believers in a one and only God. More verses can be found both in the Quran and Hadiths asserting the above with even more details. Sahih Muslim Hadith 5653 narrated by Wazila ibn al-Asqa. I heard Allah Messenger saying, Verily Allah granted eminence of Kinana from among the descendants of Ismail, and he granted eminence to the Quraysh among the Kinana, and he granted eminence to the Quraysh among the Bani Hashim, and he granted me eminence from the tribe of Bani Hashim. Since the Arabs revere Hebron as a holy place because they claim they are descendants of Abraham, then it stands to reason, logic, justice, and morality that the descendants of Abraham through the line of Isaac, the Jews, have exactly the same rights to the Kaaba, whose very foundations were laid by their Hebrew forefather, Abraham, and uncle Ishmael. During 1400 years of Arab and Muhammadan histories, no one has ever pointed out the parallel rightful and obvious claim to the Kaaba by the cousins of the Arabs and also Muslims, the Jews. There should not be allowed two irreconcilable rules, one for the Arabs claiming their rights to Hebron and Mecca, but none for the Jews asserting exactly the same rights and based upon exactly the same logic and scriptures. This claim has absolutely nothing to do as to whether the Kaaba is holy to the Jews or not. It is to do with the right of the Jews to visit the Kaaba as a building the foundations of which, according to the Quran and Hadith, was put up by the very hands of their biblical ancestors, the Hebrews, Abraham and Ishmael. If we use exactly the same contorted logic as the Arabs, then, since Arabia is forbidden to any other people who are not Muhammadan Muslims and Arab, then Israel should not accept anyone else other than the Jews or followers of the Mosaic faith. If Abraham and Ishmael had built the Kaaba, the first house of Allah, then the first language in Mecca was Hebrew and not Arabic. If Ishmael was so important in the history of the Arabs before Islam, why then is there no mention of how, where and when he and Hagar died and were buried? They know about Abraham only from the Torah. The Jews have 50% vested interest in the Kaaba because of Abraham. If the Arabs and the Muhammadans insist on their rights to Hebron and other Jewish holy places, the Jews also have the same rights in the Arab and Muhammadan ones. Since Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, and the Israelite tribes, Moses, etc., were Muslimin, according to the Quran, Al-Baqarah 2, 126-137, then all the Jews are Muslimin as they believe in the one and only God. The Israelites had been Muslimin for at least 2,000 years before Muhammad. They had no reason to convert to the new plagiarized and perverted cult belief system. La ilaha illa al-ilah wa Musa kalimu al-ilah can be the equivalent shahada of the Muslim Musawi Jews. The Jews and Judaized Arabs were living peacefully and peaceably for hundreds of years among the Arabs of Al Jazeera. Their peace was shattered by Muhammad and his followers who turned on them and murdered their men, enslaved and raped their women, Islamized their children, and plundered and occupied their lands and their wealth. The Jews, unlike the Muhammadan Arabs, did not force the pagan Arabs to convert, but allowed them to join of their own free will. It was Muhammad who demanded 
that the Jews convert to his new cult belief system, which they obviously refused since there was nothing in his Quran that they did not already have and infinity more. In simple conclusion, the Jews have exactly the same rights to the Kaaba as the Arabs have since its foundation was built by the hands of the Hebrew forefathers of the Jews, Abraham and their uncle Ishmael. They are also entitled to 50% of its income, just as the Arabs are. Otherwise, why the double standard? Early on wishful thinking, compounded with the contortion of religion, the dislocation of history, and the piracy, plunder, and perversion of the beliefs of other peoples. How could their claims be true, or possible, since anyone who has ever read the Bible would know that the names of Arabia, Allah, Mecca, or the Kaaba Based upon Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 127, the Qur'an asserts that the Hebrews, Abraham and Ishmael, raised the foundations of the Kaaba. If this is true, what are the implications and ramifications of such a statement in modern times? They are not mentioned. The first and only time that the pagan Arabs became aware of the biblical stories was when Muhammad started his evangelizing process. When investigating the names of the Arabs mentioned in the hadiths regarding Muhammad's companions, their relatives and associates prior to the Quran, one will not find a single person called Abraham or Ishmael among the hundreds of names listed in them, while the most prevalent name among the male Muhammadans is Muhammad. It was Muhammad who created these myths so that he could associate himself with the seed of Abraham and hence give himself a worthy ancestry upon Arabs cannot show a single oral or written tradition that they are in any way, shape or form related to or descended from the Hebrews Abraham or Ishmael. It is unfortunate but absolutely necessary to repeat again and again and again that the claims of the Arabs are never based on facts but are entirely